Tadvahangsa Padivraja Gacharja Satrasi Srimad is Divine Grace of Hai Chana with Bhakti Vidanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Skambi Vivanda Charja is Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gantara Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Nitai Gura Primanandi All glories to the sum of the bodies All glories to the sum of the bodies All glories to the sum of the bodies all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Nama Om Vishnu Varai Krishna Prasthaya Vadale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Tastatari Shatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, Chapter 7, entitled Scheduled Incarnation, Text Number 4. Atrapatyam abhikangshata ahadush. I'm sorry. Atrapatyam abhikangshata ahatushto. Atrapatyam abhikangshata ahatushto. Dato mayaya. Mayaham itiyad bhagavan sadatta Dato mayaham itiyad bhagavan sadatta Yat pada panka japaraga pavitra deha Yat pada panka japaraga pavitra deha. Yoga redim apurubhayam yaduhayadha. Yoga redim apurabhayam yaduhayadha. Haya yajya Atre rapatyam abhikankshata ahadhushto Dato mayaham itiyad bhagavan sadatta Yat pada panka japaraga pavitra deha Yoga ridim apu apuru bhayam yaduha hayadya Atre rapatam abhikankshata ahatushto Dato mayaham itiyad bhagavan sadatta Yat pada panka japaraga pavitra deha Yoga ritim apurubhayam yaduhaha yadhyaha Yogardhyam, acha Atera patya abhikankshata ahatushto Dato mayaham itiyad bhagavan sadatta Yat pada panka japaraga pavitra deha 
योगाढ़ुबाइम यदुहाध्य योगाजमापुरुबाइम यदुहाय हाय आद्य अत्यवत्यमिकुष्टो तत्तु मयाहमगवान् सदत्त यारंगजबराग पवित्रदेह योगारधम नपुर पाई मयादु हया हया ध्य लेडीज गो है पत्यम अभिकंक्षता आहत स्तो दत्तो माया भगवान स दत्त यारंगजराग पवित्र देह योगाढ़ुबाइमुहाय हाय आद्या लेडीज सदत्तपंकजराग पवित्रदेह योगाढ़ुबाइम यदुहाय हाय अत्रे अब सेज अत्रे अपत्यम issue abhikankshata have been prayed for aha said it tushta being satisfied dhatta given over maya <coughs> by me aham myself iti das yet because Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. Saha, he. Dhatta, Dharatraya. Yatpada, one whose feet. <coughs> Pankaja, lotus. Paraga, dust. Pavitra, purified. Deha, body. Yoga, mystic. Ridhim, opulence. Apu, got. Ubayim, for both the worlds. Yadu, the father of the Yadu dynasty. Hai Hai Adya, and others like King Hai Hai. Translation and purport by the language of the A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sri Lal Prabhupada Ki. The great sage Atri prayed for offspring, and the Lord, being satisfied with him, promised to incarnate as Atri's son, Dharatraya, Datta, the son of Atri. And by the grace of the lotus feet of the Lord, many yadus, hi hiyas, etc became so purified that they obtained both material and spiritual blessings. Purport. Transcendental relations between the personality of Godhead and the living entities are eternally established in five different affectionate humors, which are known as Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya. The sage Atri was related with the Lord in affectionate Vatsalya humor, 
and therefore as a result of his devotional perfection, he was inclined to have the personality of Godhead as his son. The Lord accepted his prayer and he gave himself as the son of Atri. Such a relation of sonhood between the Lord and his pure devotees can be cited in many instances. And because the Lord is unlimited, he has an unlimited number of father devotees. Factually, the Lord is the father of all living entities, but out of transcendental affection and love between the Lord and his devotees, the Lord takes more pleasure in becoming the son of a devotee than in becoming one's father. The father actually serves the son, whereas the son only demands all sorts of services from the father. Therefore, a pure devotee who is always inclined to serve the Lord wants him, him as the son and not as the father. The Lord also accepts such service from the devotee, and thus the devotee becomes more than the Lord. The impersonalists desire to become one with the Supreme, but the devotee becomes more than the Lord, surpassing the desire of the greatest monist. Parents and other relatives of the Lord achieve all mystic opulences automatically because of their intimate relationship with the Lord. Such opulences include all details of material enjoyment, salvation, and mystic powers. Therefore, the devotee of the Lord does not seek them separately wasting his valuable time in life. The valuable time of one's life must therefore be fully engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Then other desirable achievements are automatically gained. But even after obtaining such achievements, one should be on guard against the pitfall of offenses at the feet of the devotees. The vivid example is Haihaya who achieved all such perfection in devotional service. But because of his offense at the feet of a devotee, he was killed by Lord Parashuram. The Lord became the son of the great sage Atri and became known as Dada Treya. Om Ijnana Timiranda Sankinan Jana Shalakaya Chakshun Mitam Jaina Tazmai Sigurveva so here, Srila Prabhupada is very nicely um, elaborating on the relationship between the a devotee and the Lord. which is something um, we're all looking for. We're all looking for some kind of relationship. Uh, we're looking for some kind of relationship in this world. And uh, sometimes it's home. I can't relate to anybody, but let me just build a big house and I can live in it and surround myself. Or one may uh, have uh, some property. People become enamored. You see sometimes uh, with their cars. They may live in a shack, but they come around with big fancy cars and it's a Cadillac and it has, or it's a this thing or a that thing, doesn't matter. And it's their property. Uh, or they may have children, surround themselves with children and try to develop a relationship with them, although it falls short. Or relatives, or retire, some, their wealth. If they can't relate to anyone else, at least I have a lot of money. I have it in the bank and I can do whatever I want to. There's recently, I think there was this fellow who, um, I think he passed away. Um, he, was a, uh, he, he was a big Wall Street person. 
and um, we won't mention any names. But anyway, he uh, he scammed uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars from different um, investors. Um, but still, uh, even you have all of that, uh, it uh, falls short. Or someone may become a little bit more introspective and wants to uh, look within. Um, but uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and again, uh, it's all about relationship. If we can't have anything on the outside, well, maybe I can, uh, I'll go within myself and I'll try to search something out. But the Bhagavatam tells us, ye, what is it? Yenye Ravindaksha Mukti Maninas Tayasta Buddhaye that uh, even um, we want some uh, relationship within, uh, unless the intelligence is purified, unless you're purified within, uh, even that falls short. One becomes uh, diverted. And uh, because the intelligence is not, has not been purified, uh, they, uh, again, come back down to some mundane uh, action or mundane relationship. Oh, it failed over here. Let, let maybe it'll work over here. Maybe it'll work there. Uh, anyway, they fall down, as the Bhagavatam explains, from their imagined they're from their positions of imagined superiority. Uh, because, again, they have no uh, regard for the uh, lotus feet of the Lord. As we're hearing, as we're, Shil Prabhupada is so very nicely uh, describing uh, in this purport, that um, that uh, position um, of relationship with the Lord, with the absolute truth, or that uh, that position of having any relationship, uh, for that matter, uh, it's uh, it's a matter of uh, a purification. It's just like even in the mundane material world, uh, when uh, a couple is trying to uh, relate to each other, it has to it has to become a genuine. It has to become real. It can't be uh, artificial. It's based on uh, uh, just somebody's looks or somebody's wealth or somebody's position uh, or uh, uh, dress. Uh, these things, uh, they don't, uh, they don't uh, uh, want, we don't actually achieve the desired result. Uh, so, uh, that relationship, uh, that's very difficult uh, to achieve. Um, but it is achievable. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Manushanam Sahasre Shu Kastinjaradi Siddhaye. That there are those uh, who. Um, have achieved perfection, but the, uh, but it's very rare. It's it's not a, a simple uh, process. Even in the mundane world, again, uh, just to become perfect in any kind of work, uh, it takes a lot of endeavor, uh, a lot of in, uh, determination. What to speak of trying to achieve uh, spiritual. A perfection or a transcendental uh, relationship with the personality of God, as Prabhupada um, points out here, which is eternally there. Right? But my Angso Jiva Loki Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Krishna explains that that relationship is eternally there. Uh, but uh, some or other, uh, due to so many circumstances, that relationship has 
uh, has uh, been uh, disturbed. But it is possible uh, to come to that uh, platform. As Krishna again says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sve Sve Karmani Abhirata Sanksidim Labhate Nara. It's, it's, it's possible uh, for one uh, to come to that uh, level of perfection by uh, worshiping the Lord, connecting with the personality of Godhead, and, and performing one's work properly. Everyone has a work. A, a duty to perform. Uh, just as, uh, again, uh, if you want to do anything in this world, uh, it takes uh, time to uh, develop it. Just like if, if, you, if you have a plant and you sow the seed, uh, Shringadev is quite familiar with this. He has a very nice little garden here on the side and he's taken... Uh, little teeny seeds and he's gone through a, 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 a big um, he's given a lot uh, a lot of uh, heart uh, to uh, developing this small seed into a, a beautiful plant whether it be a tomato plant that's growing or uh, Shama Priyamadaji she has a, a teeny little plant and all of a sudden it turns into a gigantic squash plant uh, which uh, wants to uh, grow all over the place and I've been guilty of cutting it back because sometimes it, it goes all over the roses <laughs> uh, but uh, by it being cultivated in the proper way uh, it can grow so nicely. So, uh, it has to be developed, that relationship with the personality of Godhead, that relationship with anything, even in the mundane world, it has to be uh, uh, fully developed uh, in order not to fall down. In order for it not to um, fall apart. <clears throat> Here, Srila Prabhupada is so nicely describing how Atri, due to his uh, devotional perfection, and again, uh, this, uh, this is an important principle in uh, Krishna consciousness, that sometimes uh, people ask or they argue that uh, perfection is not available, it's not achievable. Because again, what, we're all born with sin. And what is the use? There's no, there's no uh, challenge or there's no goal to become perfect because we're, we're just sinful. So just accept that fact uh, in your heart. You've, you surrender to that fact and uh, you're liberated. You'll be saved in the end. Uh, of course, that uh, is not the fact. Uh, but uh, it is achievable. It is achievable, just as here, uh, Atri, by his uh, devotional perfection, uh, was able to achieve uh, the uh, uh, platform of being uh, the Lord's uh, father, this Vatsalya humor. Uh, and that achievement, uh, uh, that's there, that's available to, between the uh, Lord and the uh, uh, devotee. And Prabhupada points out that there are different relationships. We can have multiple uh, relationships with the Lord. It's not just that God is uh, uh, some uh, unknowable or some voice booming from the clouds. Uh, but is, uh, is actually a uh, loving personality in which one can develop uh, wonderful uh, transcendental affection for. And uh, that has to be there, as Prabhupada points out here. That transcendental affection and love between the Lord and His devotees, uh, it has to be there. Uh, just as again in any 
mundane relationship, there has to be some uh, genuine uh, affection. It can't be uh, uh, adulterated or perverted. Uh, otherwise, it's, uh, uh, otherwise, it becomes meaningless. <clears throat> uh, and Srila Prabhupada points out here very nicely that uh, due to that uh, wonderful relationship, the uh, devotees of the Lord and other relatives achieve all mystic opulences automatically. And it's not that they have to uh, 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 endeavor separately for something, as Bhagavatam again explains, yasyasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana, that when one becomes a devotee of the Lord and becomes properly situated, um, he achieves uh, all the opulences, all the perfections that are necessary for one to advance uh, properly in spiritual life. And one does not have to endeavor uh, separately, as Prabhupada points out here. It's automatic. Uh, due to their relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, and such opulences include material enjoyment, salvation, and mystic powers. There's no need to uh, endeavor again for something else. Um, we see in the mundane world that uh, some, uh, someone may uh, achieve, try to achieve some kind of opulence or perfection by study, sacrifice, or austerities. Vedeshu Jageshu Tapasu Chaiva. They may uh, try to achieve some kind of position or perfection by uh, their study. Uh, and, of course, we understand that uh, real study means to accept the personality of Godhead. Vedaisya Saber Ahang Eva Vedyo To accept that the Lord uh, is the uh, supreme enjoyer and uh, benefactor and friend. Uh, that is the uh, topmost understanding. So, when one engages in the process of bhakti, uh, automatically that uh, goal is achieved. Jagneshu, or sacrifice. And again, sacrifice is there for uh, what purpose? Uh, to achieve certain necessities. Right? And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita very nicely, Ishtam Bhogan Hivo Deva, Dashyante Jagnyabhavita, that by performing uh, sacrifice in the proper, with the proper understanding, all the necessities of life, life are provided. The demigods automatically uh, provide all of these uh, necessities. We don't have to endeavor separately for uh, something. But we just simply have to uh, engage in our service uh, and uh, make that as an offering, as a sacrificial offering to the Lord and the demigods and uh, all opulences, uh, everything that is necessary for one's uh, uh, well-being is provided for. Or tapashu, aus austerities again. Uh, what is the purpose of uh, austerity? It's to learn how to control the mind and senses. There's no other purpose. Uh, but by engaging in the process of bhakti, savai manak krishna prada vindayo, there's a wonderful example of how Ambarish Maharaj, he controlled all of his mind and senses by simply engaging them in, in uh, devotional activities. So we don't have to endeavor by study or sacrifice or austerities, dhanesha yat punya palama. We don't have to engage in uh, separate acts of charity. Well, we'll, we'll give to this uh, suffering uh, living being or will uh, perform some uh, charitable, uh, set up some kind of a charitable uh, organization. We don't have to do all of these things, any of these things. If a time, place, and person uh, are not uh, uh, considered uh, properly, 
then there's no benefit to it. Time, place, and person have to be there. It cannot be just done indiscriminately. So what is the purpose of charity? It has to be done with some under, uh, understanding. Yat punya palam pradishtam, or some uh, pious work. We're all trying to, uh, uh, we're trying to help these people or that people. We're trying to help the butterflies. We're trying to help the, uh, and the elephants where I get these mailers regularly because I made the, I, I, I maybe, I don't know if it's you can consider it a mistake, but I gave a, a donation to some environmental groups. And now I get so many, almost every other day, I get a mailer from save this and save that. Save, save the mountains, save the oceans, save, um, save the rivers, save... Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, really, I mean, save the trees by stop, stopping these mailers. That would be really something. Save the trees. So uh, these, um, uh, the bottom line is that we don't have to engage in any other activity because we have no obligation. Right? There's no, uh, we don't have any obligation to the demigods. We don't have any obligation to the sages or relatives. Uh, Simply uh, accepting uh, the uh, devotional activities and, and the uh, service of the um, pure devotee, that is our only, um, uh, that should be our only uh, aspiration. And it's so important because Prabhupada makes his last point here, uh, just to finish up here. Srila Prabhupada makes this last point. Therefore, the devotee of the Lord does not seek them separately, wasting his valuable time. Right? We don't waste our time with uh, all these other things. Um, because they're already, uh, they're automatically gained. But even after obtaining such achievements, one should be on guard against the pitfall of offenses at the feet of a devotee. And he gives the example of the, um, of Haihaya. I believe that's Kartavi Arjun that Srila Prabhupada is referring to. Hi, Haya. Hi, Haya was uh, Kartavi Arjuna. Uh, the Hi, Hayas were, uh, 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 were groups of uh, uh, gatherers, people. Uh, and Kartavi Arjun was uh, the king of the Hi, Hayas. So I believe that's what Prabhupada is referring to here. Hi, Haya who achieved all perfection in devotional service because he was a devotee of Dharatreya, right? But he committed the offense at the feet of a devotee, which was what? He, he killed Jamadagni and stole his cow. And for that, uh, Parasaram, uh, uh, the son of Atri, uh, and uh, came and uh, killed him. I'm sorry, Parasaram, the uh, son of uh, Jamadagni. But Prabhupada points out here, the Lord became the son of the great city Atri and became known as Dadatreya. It's so interesting. He, Dadatreya, the son of Atri, was uh, worshipped, was served by uh, Karthavi Arjuna. And he became very pious and uh, Devotional, very powerful. But he made that mistake of offending the devotees. So Prabhupada points out here, although these achievements are there, one should be on guard against the pitfall of offenses at the feet of devotees. So again, we don't have to endeavor separately, but we simply have to perform our service. That perfection will be there. It's a, it's, it's a uh, um, I guess you could say, a benefit a result of engaging in our uh, service uh, uh, properly um, and uh, being careful not to uh, offend the Vaishnavas. 
So, and there, are there any questions or comments? So I have a comment and a question. Uh, the comments, first of all, I enjoyed the class. I can't hear you. You made a lot of good points, thank you very much. At one point you were describing, I think you were referring to the Christians, but you didn't say the Christians. You were saying how some people, they think that, oh, we're too fallen, we're too sinful to achieve perfection in this life. So you just have to, like, believe, and then at the end of life, you'll attain perfection. So I, I've pondered upon this point many times, and it's it's like Sahajaism, actually. They, they don't practice anything, and... They think that they're already there. So it's kind of sahaja. Yeah. And in one sense, it's mayavad also because some of the Christians, they think that their guru is God. They think Jesus is, is God. So a little bit sahaja and mayavad, a little mix. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, in the purport, it says that because the Lord is unlimited, He has an unlimited number of father devotees. Uh, okay. So... I'm just going to share my understanding. Maybe you can correct it, and then I have a question after that. Um, we were described, we were discussing this the other day in the class. Satchitanoi Prabhu was explaining that you don't be even if you want to become the father of Krishna. You know, Krishna already has a set father. He has Nanda Maharaj. You cannot become Nanda Maharaj, but you can follow in the footsteps of Nanda Maharaj. My understanding is that would that would mean that perhaps you would become like Nanda Maharaja's friend or something and because the the elderly gopis and the elderly cowherd men they have parental affection for Krishna but they're not actual parents of Krishna but they have that parental affection so uh, that's part of my question uh, so if he has an unlimited number of father devotees I've also heard it explained that in other places, he has an unlimited number of like gopis, unlimited number of friends. So maybe it's because I'm trying to calculate with my material mind. How how is that? How would that? How could we see that? What's going on in the spiritual world? Is it that there's billions of, you know, gopas, you know, Krishna's friends, and does? How is it that Krishna is able to spend time with each and every one, or does he not spend time with each and every one? Does he just spend time with like the primary cowherd friends, and the other ones just serve the primary cowherd friends? How does that work? Krishna expands himself. He become, He's present everywhere, just like when he performs his rasa dance, uh, or when he was uh, with his... Uh, uh, queens in uh, Dwarka, uh, they all felt that and they uh, interacted Krishna with Krishna personally. He was actually there with them in all cases. So uh, I would uh, answer that uh, Krishna expands himself into these unlimited, in, into so many unlimited forms, uh, which uh, may seem inconceivable, but uh, Krishna is inconceivable. Uh, he has, uh, he, he expands himself into unlimited uh, forms, uh, unlimited uh, gopas and gopis and uh, servants and associates, and at the same time he unlimitedly expands himself uh, to associate with each and every uh, one of those. Uh, and yet, uh, again, he's ever increasing. It's not that it stops. It, uh, it, the next moment, he's increased again. Uh, I believe we were reading something some time back in one of the purports here, how there's a, a constant um, increase and competition as Krishna uh, associates or um, relates to, uh, say, uh, Radharani, that relationship, uh, she relates back to him, which increases his, 
uh, and then he increase, uh, relates back to her, and uh, that increases her ecstasy. So it, it's, it's a constant increase. So I would say that, uh, yes, the personality of Godhead, because he's the personality of Godhead and unlimited, as Prabhupada points out here, uh, he can expand himself and associate in those unlimited ways, uh, inconceivable, inconceivably unlimited ways. Unless anyone else has another. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, in uh, those prayers, sometimes the devotees, this is a comment and a question. The, when a devotee is in at that level, like, goodbye to my three prayers, goodbye to my bathing in the river, I don't have to pray to my ancestors, I'm just satisfied by glorifying Krishna, I don't need anything. And the other person, that one, the Varshibu Tatta Ninam Pritinam, you know, we are not indebted to the demigods, to the sages, to this and that. Just focus on Krishna. So, provided that a devotee is at that level of realization, it fits perfectly. Or we are also aspiring to be like that, hopefully, to totally depend 100%. But now the question is. For those people who are not at that level, but they're still devotees, or they want to be devotees, and they see another angle of vision in which, you know, we just celebrated the people outside, Mother, Mother Earth, Mother Earth, and it's all environmentally, you know, like, at least for that day, or some of them are really conscious. So, if devotees, or some people, care for the trees, for the, for the creation, which is part of Krishna, and they see it in that divine, they might not be at the other level to just, I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to disregard this. So I'm saying, is there a room for that, provided that they actually connect to Krishna yeah, and take yeah, care of, of course, that? Of course. And we, since we are the devotees who are supposed to be the preachers, the leaders of how we behave, how we act, how we see the earth and the trees and the animals and how they've been taken care. So it will be a, how do you say, like a big asset for them to become attracted to us. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. We, we encourage people in, in any way, in every way. Uh, if, if someone wants to, uh, um, if, if one can uh, get closer to understanding the absolute truth by appreciating his creation, uh, that's okay. We don't have a problem with that. Uh, that the jnanis are trying to do that. That's their idea. Uh, by analytical study, they want to appreciate material nature and see how it ultimately leads to the absolute truth. So, of course, we appreciate and encourage uh, uh, if you want to do some sort of humanitarian work or if you want to engage in some philanthropic work, that's okay. But, but then they have to go a, a step further and that's where the devotee comes in. Uh, we have to teach them and that, the, that is just the beginning. Uh, ultimately, it has to lead to understanding Krishna who is the supreme benefactor and enjoyer and the proprietor of all of that. And he's the creator of all that. We can appreciate the beautiful butterflies. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. But imagine uh, the absolute truth's beauty. And that's where devotees again come in. They have to be there to bring people, uh, nurture them and bring them a little bit uh, further. Thank you. We don't mind if people practice uh, yoga or gyan or or austerities, etc. That's okay. But you have to go a little bit further. Jai Shri Mahabhagavatam Ki Jai Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai